Hello, and welcome to Berry Nerd Corner. My name is Brandon, and this is my attempt to beat Pokemon Fire Red version using only Ash's Pokemon. Now, Ash in Kanto is quite a noob. He cheeses his way out of most of his gym battles and is cheesed out of the Pokemon League when he gets there. His team composition is also kind of weird. You see, he catches slash obtains the on-screen Pokemon during his travels. He also briefly owns Eradicate because he trades for it, but I'm not counting that. I am counting Haunter and Mr. Mime, which I'll explain later. Anyway, despite this decent selection of Pokemon, he only ever uses half of them regularly. Two aren't even used into the league, one isn't touched until the Orange Islands, and another only appears in two total episodes before Ash releases it. Anyway, the rules are simple. I can only use Pokemon that Ash caught slash obtained while traveling in Kanto for the Indigo League. Later visits to Kanto and Kanto Pokemon caught elsewhere do not count. So no Snorlax, Lapras, Gengar, Farfetch'd, or Dragonite. I can obtain them at lower forms than Ash did, but I can't evolve them past where Ash used them. So sorry, no Venusaur. I would be stuck with Bulbasaur if I chose that starter. Otherwise, standard hardcore Nuzlocke rules apply. Only the first viable encounter per area is allowed. Any fainted Pokemon must be released immediately. No items in battle. Battle mode must be kept on set, and no overleveling past the next gym leader's ace. Without further ado, let's jump into Kanto and see if Ash could beat the region of Kanto in a hardcore Nuzlocke. Unfortunately, you're going to see some weird video glitches for the first bit. OBS wasn't recording my emulator properly when I started, but I fixed it very soon. Anyway, we meet the professor, name ourselves Ash, then change the most important setting of all, text speed. Given that Ash is a dumb, reckless child, I decide to run immediately into the wild grass to catch my first Pokemon. But I'm stopped by the Pokemon Professor. After considering our options, I choose to start with Charmander. Given my rules, this is the only starter that can evolve past its first stage. Plus, it's the best of all of them, no questions asked. It's also my favorite. I name him Alpha and immediately battle Gary and his Squirtle. Despite taking a critical hit from Gary's Squirtle, Alpha manages to scratch the little monster to death. Water may beat fire, but Dragon Claws beat Turtle Shells. After some lost footage due to OBS being a POS, we fix our record setting and have a newly expanded team. First is Gamma, the Mankey, caught on Route 22. She's allegedly a gentle girl, but you'll find out she's anything but. Her favorite pastime is critically clawing out the eyes of Caterpie. Next is Beta the Pidgey, caught her on Route 1. She likes tackling cocoon Pokemon until they turn to paste. You've already met Alpha, my Charmander. He's going to be very important in burning down Viridian. I, I mean, defeating the bug catchers in Viridian Forest. That's what I meant. After that is Delta the Caterpie from Route 2. He's a bug. And the newest addition is Epsilon the Rattata. He hangs out with bugs, uh, so I'm not sure how I or the rest of the team are going to feel about him. Anyway, after burning down the forest, here's my team as I head into the Pewter Gym. In fact, I don't even bother to fully heal my team or get to the level cap. Gamma gently reduces Geodude to dust with a couple of karate chops. She then gently drops Onyx by sweeping the leg with low kick, and that earns us the Boulder Badge. We then move on to Route 3. We clear out a bunch of trainers with relative ease and prepare to enter Mount Moon. Inside, after scorching some bugs, Alpha evolves into Charmeleon. Let's just hope he obeys better than Ash's Charmeleon did. Farther into the cave, we take care of some Team Rocket grunts and encounter a fellow nerd. After Delta takes him down, I claim the Helix Fossil and head to Cerulean City. On the way, I encounter a random Black Belt who teaches our gentle Gamma how to mega punch people and mons in the face. After some light grinding, I run into Gary as I head north of Cerulean. The battle starts with his Pidgeotto and my Epsilon. We exchange damage, but two Thundershocks and a quick attack manage to clip the bird's wings. Gary then sends out his Rat to finish off my mouse. So I send out good old gentle Gamma who quickly finishes that rodent. Next up is Abra, who can do literally nothing except try to teleport away. So Gamma does what she does best, punch it very hard in the face. Last is his Squirtle, and I switch out to Delta. After a poison powder, I hit the turtle with a couple confusions to take him down. We head north along Nugget Bridge, take down some inconsequential trainers, and along the way, Beta evolves into Pidgeotto, which is great. At the end of the route, we find Bill's house, and uh, I have two questions. One. Why does your teleporter have a cell separation program? And two, what happened to that Clefairy? Anyway, I'm leaving immediately. 
Now it's time for Misty. She starts with her Staryu, and I send in Beta to immediately whirlwind it away for Starmie. Honestly, in hindsight, this was totally an Ash move. I hit the Starfish with a sand attack only to remember that accuracy hacks never work on the opponent. This mistake costs me Beta, who falls to a second Water Pulse. I send in Delta to put Starmie to sleep and confuse it, then switch for Epsilon and hope for the best. After a couple Thundershocks and some confusion damage, Misty breaks the rules and heals her Pokemon, which is bad. I paralyze Starmie to try some Parafusion strats, but Starmie pushes through it all to claim another life. I give up and send in Gamma to get sweet, sweet revenge for her two fallen comrades. Misty sends Staryu back in, but not even some lucky confusion hacks can stop Gamma's outrage. Two Mega Punches later, and the Cascade Badge is mine. After that bittersweet victory, it's time to bury our dead. Goodbye, Beta and Epsilon. You were average Pokemon at best. On our way to Vermilion City, we avoid as many trainers as possible for now to avoid going over the level cap. Along the way, Gamma gently defeats a youngster by brutally punching his Spiro in the face and then chopping his Raticate in half. Now to our next order of business, our next encounter. Delta and I traverse Diglett Tunnel to Route 2, where we trade an Abra that we caught earlier for a Mr. Mime. This may be a controversial choice, but Ash did technically catch Mr. Mime in Kanto. He uses it later in Pokemon Journeys, but imagine if he had used it during the Kanto League. I guess we'll just see how that goes for us. The trainers on the SSN didn't stand a chance against the combined might of Mimeon and Gamma. Same is true for Gary. As always, Gary leads with his bird and I send out Mimeon with the hope of ripping Gary a new one. Two confusions later and Pidgeotto is done. Next up is Gary's War Turtle. We trade a couple hits, leaving Mimeon with four HP before I send in Old Faithful. Delta. After some lucky confusion, War Turtle takes itself out on the next turn. Gary then sends in his Raticate. Delta quickly puts it to sleep before retreating for Gamma. One brick break later, and that Raticate is DOA. Last comes Kadabra, but I take a chance with Gamma and obliterate the dumb thing with a Mega Punch. Get good, Gary. While grinding before the Electric Gym, I run into a level 29 Doug Trio. Fortunately, I had Delta up front, so he was immune to all ground type moves and the Arena Trap ability because he's a flying type. So my butterfly manages to defeat this giant mole monster. I decide to take on Lieutenant Surge with just Mimeon to make him earn his place on the team, as if he hadn't already. Surge begins with a Voltorb. After taking minimal damage from a Shockwave, Mimeon takes it down with just two confusions. Pikachu comes out, only to go right back to its ball after a single confusion. Raichu then comes out and tries some double team and paralysis hacks, but Mimeon ain't even bothered. and takes it out with three confusions. And that's the Thunder Badge. On Route 9, we run into Bug Catcher Brent, who thinks Beedrill is the superior bug Pokemon. Fortunately, Delta and I are here to prove otherwise. We sleep powder both of his Beedrill and then confusion them twice apiece to take the win without taking any damage. Brent is absolutely shook. What? Rock Tunnel is our next destination. Fortunately, with Repels, Flash from our HM Meowth, and Gentle Gamma, it's not a problem. We avoid causing a tunnel collapse, steal candy from a kitten, and evolve Gamma into Primeape. On the other side, we nope our way through Lavender Town. Not today, Satan. When we arrive in Celadon City, we make a beeline for a random rooftop to find my favorite Pokemon, Eevee. We can't use it for this run, but I still must have it. Gym time. I want to take down Erica to boost the level cap to 43 and allow me to catch several new team members. She begins by sending out Victory Bell to face Mimeon. After a turn of paralysis, Mimeon defeats it with a couple of confusions and heals up with an Orenberry. Erica then sends out her Tangela, who plants its roots and leaves Mimeon on 8 HP, goodness child, before falling to confusion as well. I then swap out for Delta to take down Erica's Vileplume. As usual, I put her to sleep immediately, then start hitting confusions. Delta gets paralyzed and Erica heals with a Hyper Potion. But after a critical hit, Delta manages to finish the job. First contributions, Mimeon learns Psybeam, which would have made this gym even easier. With badge number four in hand, we move on briefly to Saffron City to get the TM for Psychic, which we teach to Delta. Mr. Mime just learned Psybeam and will learn Psychic naturally later, so this makes more sense. Nothing of note happens in the Celadon game corner. Gamma just gently breaks all of Giovanni's Pokemon. Like Bugcatcher Brent, Giovanni is shook. Back in Lavender Town, we once again stomp Gary. First is Pidgeotto versus Mimeon. Two side beams take care of that. 
Second is Wartortle, but he's no match for Mamian's Magical Leaf. Next is Growlithe, who can't even handle one Psybeam. After that is Execute, which is Alpha's time to shine. He gets put to sleep and Leech Seeded, but a quick Ember hardboils those eggs. And last is Kadabra, so I stay into Claude's face off. One Metal Claw almost does the job, but Kadabra barely hangs on and lowers my accuracy with Kinesis, so I switch to Mimean and finish the job with Magical Leaf. After that, we catch a Ghastly and name her Zeta. Again, another controversial choice, but the anime's dialogue clearly states that Ash captures Haunter. Plus, who doesn't love using the Ghastly line? Come on. Speaking of Ghastly, this tower is full of them. After burning a bunch back to the afterlife, Alpha levels up to level 34 and learns to spit even more fire. Nice. Skipping ahead, we use the Poke Flute to wake up Snorlax west of Celadon. I then boldly choose to run away from it after it humbles Gamma with a headbutt. Regardless, the path is open for the cycling road. After beating a bunch of bikers with my butterfly, I enter the safari zone to try catching a Tauros. After an immediate failure, I manage to catch one and name him Ada. Now on to the last two captures. Off screen, I take out the other Snorlax, evolve Ghastly to Haunter, and retrieve this super rod. Now it's fishing time. Oh boy. In Vermilion City, I fish until I find a Krabby. I catch her and name her Theta. Next, in the filthy waters of the beautiful Celadon City, I fish until I catch a Grimer and name her Iota. And with that, we have the whole Kanto team, aside from the other 29 Tauros. Anyway, next is a ton of grinding. During this, Alpha evolves to Charizard, Theta evolves to Kingler, and Iota evolves into Muck. But most importantly, I find a random old man who totally understands me as a person. Koga's Gym should be a total sweep, since I have a pair of powerful Psychic users. So what could possibly go wrong? First out are Coughing and Mimeon. Expecting Toxic, I set up a substitute, but Coughing reads me like a darn book and breaks the sub before using Toxic the following turn. I end the match quickly with a side beam, bringing out Muck. I take a chance by staying in, and am not punished when it only uses Minimize. This allows Mimeon to finish the job next turn with a second side beam. Koga then sends out his second coughing next, so I switch to Zeta, who doubly resists any poison attacks. Zeta proceeds to punch the little monster in the face a bunch. Not even Smokescreen and two Hyper Potions can save coughing from Zeta's ghostly wrath. Eventually, the poison gas Pokemon falls, and Koga sends out his final Pokemon, Weezing. I decide to switch to Delta, who was brutally murdered by a crit and then poison damage. I send Zeta back in to avenge our beloved Butterfree with a few nightshades. We won the battle, but at what cost? Bye bye, Butterfree. Warning the loss of our beloved Delta, we move on to Silphco in Saffron City. There, I use my childhood memories to find the card key immediately and clear out all the grunts in the building. After that, we run into Gary, who's just hanging out in a hostage situation because he wants to fight me. What a weirdo. Unsurprisingly, the loser leads with his bird, who is now a Pidgeot. I send out Iota for her debut battle. Surprisingly, Iota ties Pidgeot for speed, so they exchange some hard hits, but Iota manages to pull off the win before Gary sends out his execute. I stay in momentarily, hoping for an Oko, and fortunately am not punished. I then swap out for Ada, who quickly finishes the eggs with Pursuit. Then comes Alakazam, but Adamon handles this Alakazam quite easily. Hopefully, this is a sign of things to come. After that, Gary's Growlithe intimidates us, so I switch to Theta for type advantage. But after taking a lot of damage from Bite and a residual Future Sight, I switch for Gamma, who gently incapacitates his Growlithe before handling Gary's Blastoise with a few hard hits. Gary leaves and we move on to corner Giovanni in the president's office. He challenges us to a battle, but he's not ready for one of our new recruits, Theta. First, Nidorino falls to a pair of mud shots, only managing a soft hit. Nido Queen is next. Theta lowers her speed twice with mud shot before finishing the fight, as she only went for tail whip. When Kangaskhan comes out, I stay in to try Guillotine. After one miss, Theta manages to decapitate the marsupial and bring out Giovanni's Rhyhorn who immediately falls to a surf. GG, Giovanni. Get good. Finishing up in Saffron City, we have the Psychic Gym. And, well, it was a slaughter.
I send out Ada to see if I can replicate his victory over Gary's Alakazam. His first victim, Kadabra, who falls to a single secret power. After a level up, Ada learns Thrash, which will surely be useful in this fight. Mr. Mime comes out next and manages to survive a secret power, baiting out Sabrina's hyper potions. A few turns later, a high roll on secret power Oko's the Mime. Venomoth also tanks a secret power, but then falls to Thrash. Out comes Alakazam, only for it to fall to a critical hit on Thrash. Ada is an unstoppable psychic killing machine. Now that we're down to our last two badges, I decided to stop at home and see how my mom is doing before Theta conquers the Seas of Kanto in the Cinnabar Gym. Speaking of, Blaine leads with his Growlithe against Theta. Unfortunately, Theta's special attack is garbage, and Growlithe cuts her attack with Intimidate. However, a Surf still Oko's the puppy and brings out a horse. Ponyta manages to survive a mud shot and retaliates with a soft fire blast. After healing, Ponyta falls to a single Surf. Blaine then sends out a bigger horse, but a critical hit Surf takes it out before it can do anything. Last is Arcanine, who lowers Theta's attack even more. She hits with Surf, dodges a Fire Blast, and then finishes the battle with another Surf. This just shows how easy Blaine is with any Pokemon using Surf. Theta's special attack is literally her lowest stat, and yet she had no difficulty with this gym. The boss gauntlet continues with Giovanni in the Viridian City Gym. He starts with his Rhyhorn against Theta, but we know how this one ends. Our next victim is Dugtrio. He manages to hit a decent Earthquake before drowning which is more than Rhyhorn could ever hope to do. Giovanni then sends out his Nita Queen. Theta hits her with a mud shot, tanks another earthquake, then finishes her off with a second mud shot. Out comes Nito King, who almost falls to a single mud shot. After two futile hyper potions, two mud shots steal his fate. And Giovanni's last Pokemon is another Rhyhorn. You should have gotten good, dude. And that's eight badges. On our way to Victory Road, we encounter Gary on Route 22 for actually the first time since I forgot to challenge him here earlier in the game. Round one is Pidgeot versus Mimeon. Two psychics later and Pidgeot falls. Round two brings in Blastoise who sets up some rain. I switch out for Theta and then for Iota. Blastoise hits a couple of measly water guns before falling to poison damage from Sludge Bomb. Round three is Alakazam versus Ada, but we all know how this one plays out. Alakazam spends its two turns calming itself down, knowing its life is about to end. Next comes Growlithe. After boosting its speed with agility, it manages to hit a soft flame wheel before falling to secret power. Gary sends in another Rhyhorn, but we know how to handle this one too. Last is Execute, and I stay in to stomp it once before switching for Alpha. Alpha then obliterates it with a single flamethrower. You got one more chance to get good, Gary. One more. After pushing a bunch of boulders around, we reach the Indigo Plateau. I grind everyone to the level cap of 60, add a few new moves, and head on in. Here's the team. Pause if you want to see their moves or stats. First up, we have Lorelei, Master of the Ice type. The redhead begins with the Dugong, and I send in Gamma. One Brick Break gently takes down the Seal Pokemon. Next up is Slowbro. She boosts her special defense, fails to make Gamma drowsy, and then falls to a critical hit strength boosted by bulk up. Gamma, you're a monster. After that is Cloyster, who also succumbs to a single brick break, and the Gamma domination doesn't end there. One strength takes down Jinx, and a brick break handles Lapras just as easily. We move on to the next member, Bruno. Bruno sends out Onyx against Mimeon, who obliterates it with Magical Leaf. His next Pokemon are Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, but both fall to a single Psychic. He tries to bide some time with his second Onyx, but it falls just as quickly as the first. Then comes out Bruno's ace, Machamp, who actually manages to hold on and makes a spooky face at Mimeon. Bruno attempts to salvage the fight with a couple of full restores, but nothing can save Machamp from the horror that is Mr. Mime. And the domination train doesn't stop with Agatha. In fact, her battle is the easiest of them yet. Five psychics, five kills. And now it's time for Lance, who should more than make up for the easy fights so far. He starts off with the Gyarados against Mimeon, whom I fortunately taught Thunderbolt just for this occasion. He then sends out his Aerodactyl, who manages to outspeed Mimeon and do some light damage before getting paralyzed by Thunderbolt, which is like a 10% chance. After a full restore, Mimeon puts Aerodactyl in even lower health, 
with paralysis again before finishing it off the next turn. Mymian, you are unstoppable. This brings out Dragonite, which is horrifying and might just stop you. I hesitantly switch out for Iota, who has the best chance of tanking this thing's hits, including a hyper beam on entry. Oh my gosh. I take the recharge turn to boost my defense before going for Sludge Bomb. After an outrage starts, I reluctantly switch back to Mimian, who takes the damage pretty well and heals up with a Citrus Berry. Meanwhile, Dragonite is confused by my pro-level switching strats. I chance a Psychic, which manages to finish off the dragon. For her contributions, Yoda learns a nasty new move, possibly for the next battle. But in the current one, Lance sends out a Dragonair, so I set up a substitute, expecting it to try a Thunder Wave. It works out, because it can't even break my sub with Outrage. After some brief back and forth, Mimian takes it out with another Psychic. Last out is another Dragonair, so I try the same strat. Substitute leaves Mimian with 4 HP. Dude, what is up with you in single digit health? But Substitute takes a Hyper Beam, leaving Dragonair to recharge. This means that I can freely switch to Theta and use Ice Beam twice for the win, despite some paralysis hacks. And with that, I've conquered the Elite Four without losing any Pokemon. But that just leaves one final showdown with Gary. Let's see if we can go all the way. I walk in the room and start the fight. First up, Pidgeot versus Mimian for like the fourth time. I start with a substitute expecting various kinds of hacks, but that doesn't work. The stupid bird just hits me with Aerial Ace. Two turns later, Mimian takes down Pidgeot with a Thunderbolt with half of his health gone. Gary sends out Arcanine and I stay in to hit it with Psychic. Flamethrower leaves me with 20 HP, but then Arcanine finishes off Mimian with extreme speed. Rest well, you horrifying monster. You've earned it. I then send out Theta, who takes a flamethrower before narrowly missing the KO with Mudshot. But because of Arcanine's lowered speed, Theta can outspeed next turn and finish the fight with Surf. This brings out Executor, so I swap for Gamma. Executor fails to put Gamma to sleep because of his ability and misses an Egg Bomb while Gamma shows off her strength. After a cheating full restore, the stupid tree takes down our gentle girl, Gamma. You've done well, Gamma. I send out Iota, who immediately avenges her friend with Sludge Bomb. This provokes Gary's Alakazam. After tanking a Psychic, Iota manages to pull off a clutch kill with poison damage. Gary brings out Rhydon, so I naturally swap for Theta and finish it with a single Surf after taking an Earthquake. This leaves Gary with just his Blastoise. Theta manages to lower his speed with Mudshot before falling to a Hydro Pump. Next, I send out Iota to do the honorable thing. Sacrifice herself with Memento to secure the victory for the team. Ada comes out next and starts wailing on the tortoise immediately. After tanking a rain-boosted Hydro Pump, Gary robs Ada of his victory with a full restore. Enraged, Ada pulls out a critical hit to bring Blastoise to the red, but becomes confused from fatigue. I take a chance, and the good-for-nothing cheater uses another full restore. This is looking bad. Ada uses rest to heal himself, then eats his chesto berry to wake up. Unfortunately, he's still confused. Except he snaps out immediately. He trades hits with Blastoise, barely surviving a hydro pump, only because the rain stopped. Then, the unthinkable happens. Ada scores another critical hit to take down Blastoise for good and make us the champion. And with that, Ash has conquered the Kanto region within the rules of a hardcore Nuzlocke. He didn't even use Charizard in the league. I didn't even use Charizard. Yeah, it could have been a bit more tidy. Tighter level caps, better moves and strategies, more damage calcs. But that's not how I want to play. I'm just here to have some fun. And I think we learned some valuable lessons about Ash. Number one, his type coverage was quite lacking in Kanto. Number two, his team utilization was even worse. He should have been using Tauros, Kingler, and Mr. Mime the entire time. And his Muck. What about Muck? Bro. Muck. Number three, his over-reliance on Charizard was truly his undoing. I managed to beat the league without even using him. And number four, lastly, but most importantly, he needed to keep his prime ape. But that'll be it for this episode. If you liked what you saw, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. If you have an idea for a future challenge run, leave it in the comments down below. I'll see you nerds in the next episode. And don't forget, play more video games. Bye-bye.